the psychological impact of HIV AIDS on children has been even more disastrous. In Zimbabwe, there are approximately 780,000 AIDS orphans. Many suffer from depression and hopelessness. Parent dies, they are not supported in their grief. Then maybe there are inheritance disputes and then the siblings are split up. So you have multiple losses because you not only lose your parent, you probably lose first your friends because you can't go to school. Then you lose your parent, then your siblings are split up. And then probably in an area where it's a high prevalence of HIV and AIDS, three, four years down the road, when you have build a new relationship with an aunt or an uncle or your grandmother, she dies as well. So over a period of five, seven years, you can have multiple loss, multiple stress factors. This is Massie Camp. Massie is a Salvation Army project the children who come here have lost one or both parents, are suffering from depression or have to earn a living to look after their families. They come here to learn how to cope with their new lives and for psychological help. Nompilo is one of them. Her week in Massie reveals not only that she hasn't come to terms with her parents' loss, but that she's obsessed with death and suicide. During my mom's illness, I'm the one who was bathing me. And after all, I wasn't using any gloves or whatever. So, that's not that I'm a useless girl. Maybe I'm HIV positive as well. For now, Nompilo refuses to be tested. She's too frightened of the result. And the future looks even more uncertain. Getting married. <laughs> I don't wish to have the husband. Why not? <laughs> Like Nompilo, Bevan is afraid of being HIV positive, afraid of tests, afraid of relationships. You find that from 14 years uh, up to 20, Young people are confessing that uh, they are having sex without condoms. There are many young people. Imagine 14, they are sexually active. What's your life, life expectancy when you are 14 and you are having sexually active without a condom, without protection? What's your life expectancy? Maybe it's 24. Yeah. He might be 14, he will just survive maybe 10 or 15 years. Then maybe end, maybe Bevan comes. He's ready to get married now. Then he gets married. Then now he gets AIDS. Adults say sex has become the easiest, cheapest available entertainment for teenagers. But in poverty-struck Zimbabwe, sex is also survival, especially for girls. Many have to prostitute themselves in order to provide for younger brothers and sisters. A lot of them, you know, they just have to go and struggle and find work. And, and that is specifically for girls' orphans a really high risk factor. And it's sort of really a danger of a second generation of new HIV infected children. Because they struggle, you know, let's say you have a 16 year old girl with two younger brothers and sisters. The granny has passed away and the child has to fully cope on herself. I was just told today by a pediatrician who is as well a child psychotherapist, that he has a 16-year-old child in therapy who has to sell every month and her body and provide sex to her landowner to pay for her electricity bill. This is an old church converted into an internet cafe in Bulawayo. It's also the headquarters of the Splash Girls, a group of AIDS orphans who met in Masie camp and who decided to break the never-ending cycle of HIV-AIDS 
by creating jobs for themselves. In the spring of 2003, they started a bicycle courier service with the help of some Swiss donors. Zimbabwe was in the grips of a long-standing fuel crisis. The timing was perfect. Today, there are only 10 of them. They don't earn much, but what they do earn is enough to give them a sense of security. Having a future helps them overcome the pain of loss. Come up with ideas, uh, come up with things which people think you cannot do, that will help you to survive in life. Because if you rely, I mean, these days it's so difficult to get a job, I would say. It's very difficult. No matter how much um, papers you've got, qualification papers you've got, for you to get a job, it's difficult. So just come up with a project, something which you can do, even if you're at home, even wherever. Some organizations and responses are what I would call a victim response. All these helpless, poor, poor orphans, let's help them. And they, programs don't believe often into the resourcefulness of children and they regard them as helpless victims who need our handouts. And you potentially create 20 to 30 percent of a new generation of people who are totally dependent, who feel that all they are entitled to is to reach out their hand and say, please help me. And that's a disaster, on top of the disaster which we are facing today. Stefan German is a firm believer in resilience. He thinks that with the right kind of help, the children can overcome this psychological and economic void. A small group of girls did it, so can others. It's not so hard to believe in that when you see the problems fade away at a blissfully carefree football match in Massillé, 